Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order this special uh, board meeting for Thursday, September 15th, 2022. Will you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Clerk, will you call the roll, please? Mayor President. Here. Mayor President Grace. Here. Trustee Ayers. Here. Trustee Butler. Here. Trustee Hardy. Trustee Sorcelli. Trustee Murphy. And all right. Thank you. And thank you all the trustees I could make here on uh, such a short notice and uh, everyone for attending tonight. So uh, this is just regarding one item tonight. There will be no public comment, no reports or anything else. So we can go right into uh, item number four, and that's withdrawing ballot question from the November general election. And I'll kick it over to Administrator Kirk for a little bit of overview. Thanks, Mayor Karspeck. Um, and thank you uh, to the trustees that were able to make it here tonight on very short notice. Um, as you know, Back in July, we were approached by the developers of the Heron Lake subdivision uh, in TPC Colorado, as well as some members of the Handy Ditch Company board, including the president, uh, to talk about the possibility of annexing the reservoir uh, or the reservoirs that are owned by the Handy Ditch Company, uh, McNeil Reservoir and Welch Reservoir, um, for the purpose of potentially developing golf holes and some kind of collaborative partnership with the ditch company. Uh, we've, we've talked about some of the reasons why that might make sense in the future if they're able to negotiate a deal that works for both parties. Um, and we also talked about the need for uh, any, any annexation decision west of County Road 19 has to go to the voters as a result of Ordinance 1180. It was adopted back in 2016. Um, and so prior to considering the annexation, um, the voters need to make a decision about uh, whether or not that property should be annexed. If, if that goes to the vote uh, or to the voters and the voters vote no, the town board cannot annex the property. If that question goes to the voters and the voters vote yes, then the board can consider the annexation. As we've talked about before, uh, the ballot question that the town board approved uh, in, in July, the board voted to notify the, the county of our intent to participate in the election. That special meeting occurred on July, on July 28th um, after it was rescheduled from the July 23rd regular meeting at the request of, of the Handy Ditch Company. Um, we voted, or the board voted to notify the county of, of our intent to participate in August. The board approved a resolution that established the ballot language. Um, and again, if, the, if that ballot um, if the results of that question on the ballot were a majority yes vote of the voters, then the Handy Dish Company, if they so choose, can submit a petition for annexation. Uh, there's no commitment to annex, uh, and there's no obligation to annex. Uh, and as you know, we didn't request the annexation. We we're simply accommodating the request, the developer, and the, and the representatives from the Handy Dish Company board. Uh, subsequent to all of that, uh, as you know, on Tuesday night this week, uh, there was some uh, feedback and commentary during the public <coughs> comment portion of our regular meeting uh, regarding the appropriateness of that uh, ballot measure and whether or not, or that ballot question of whether or not the Handy Dish Company Board really had the authority to make any decisions uh, to put a question on the ballot uh, without the approval of the shareholders. Uh, yesterday afternoon, we received a request from the Handy Dish Company uh, board to remove the question from the ballot. Uh, we had already talked to the county about the ability to do that. Um, and for most of the day yesterday, we spent the day trying to figure out whether or not that was possible. Late yesterday afternoon, we received uh, a written confirmation via email from the county that that is not possible. Uh, that the ballot question cannot be removed physically from the ballots uh, and that the town will be on the hook to pay for um, the election costs as we would have been had the election or should the election move forward anyway. Um, there is an option under our intergovernmental agreement and that's afforded by state statute to uh, effectively cancel the results of the election before it happens. Um, we can cancel our IGA with the county if the board wanted to do that. Um, that would effectively nullify or invalidate any results of the election, uh, but it would not remove it from the ballot and it would not 
um, reduce costs that we may incur. We did budget for the cost of the election uh, with the expectation that the developer would reimburse us under our existing reimbursement development agreement or reimbursement agreement with them for their development. Um, but the question before you tonight, uh, we did prepare a resolution um, in, in support of the request made by the Handy Dish Company to cancel the question on the ballot, uh, as I've described. But again, it will not remove the question from the ballot. Uh, it will simply nullify any results. And what that means is that then, should a deal be worked out with the developer and with the ditch company in which uh, there's some mutually beneficial arrangement um, that's consistent with kind of the ideas that have been discussed so far, then they would need to go back on the ballot in the future uh, in order to annex, if, if that was something they wanted to do. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Uh, Thanks. All right. Uh, any questions for the trustees? <coughs> if we uh, suspend our IGA with the county, is there any other effects of that for this purpose? Uh, in what way? Essentially, if, if we move forward with this by essentially nullifying the results, are there any other consequences from the county at our expense? Uh, not that I'm aware of, but uh, maybe Clerk Samora has a better. For a point of clarification, if the town board does approve this resolution, it essentially would withdraw the ballot question so that the results are essentially suppressed. They're not valid. It does not nullify the IGA with either Larimer or Wellington. It simply has to do with the ballot question itself. Okay. So we don't have to reinstate an IGA afterwards or something. It's just a question. And the results, we wouldn't even know. It doesn't matter. This would never be known right. if the resolution is approved by the town board. By anyone. By anyone that is correct. <coughs> no. Just mind if we open it up to the public? See if anyone wants to speak? Yeah. Yeah. No, let's go ahead. Yeah. Okay, great. Is there anyone in the audience wishes to speak? Does anyone in the audience wish to speak? I don't think we have anything written down. So if you could just come to the podium, state your name and address. Thank you. Steve Anderson, President of the Handy Ditch. I've been here before from two of my hearing aids now. Uh, as I said before, in, in, in all the meetings, that uh, the basic final decision stands with the uh, handy stock owner. Uh, I guess some of the approach that the, the board took was, <coughs> was the intentions were also with the town board in, in your respect uh, to uh, make things work and since there was a no non-binding situation in this uh, we figured it was just a good precursor to uh, go ahead and see what the town thought and then we we're having a special board meeting on the 22nd of October and uh, then the, the entire shareholder uh, class can weigh in on it. So, in other words, it's just a, a situation where we uh, thought it was a good thing to the long term improvement of the infrastructure because of the leases that were offered by the uh, developer. So, other than that, I just uh, a lot of misinformation went out, and I guess that's why we're here at this point. Anyone else wish to speak to this? Okay. Seeing none. <coughs> um, what does everyone think? I, I guess if, if the hand doesn't want to proceed, uh, in my opinion, uh, I don't see any need to proceed. I think this can happen again next year or whatever or never. Um, I, I think. From our standpoint here on the board, we were there's some stuff in here that's for the town's interest too, and as a handy shareholder ourselves. Um, but I think for the most part, what motivated that to the special meeting originally in July uh, was to help this conversation coming up in October, and um, essentially help the, the, the ditch company. But if the ditch company does not want to proceed, I don't see any need to. Um, but I guess my only thoughts are if this October is going to con conversation is going to happen in October. Uh, 
it, it would seem beneficial for us to, to keep this op option open, depending on what result that uh, conversation, which way that conversation goes. Um, but if, you, if the handy does not want to proceed, I guess, you know, down the road, whatever your decision is, we can open this back up. Just the unfortunate is, is, the, is the cost incurred on this. Um, so I, I guess I'm in favor of, of going ahead with the resolution. Yeah, I mean, it's <clears throat> we scrambled to get it in place in time, and we're scrambling to get it right back off the books. So, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. I was for the past couple days. I've been okay with trying to take it off, but kind of as soon as I found out that it couldn't be taken off without the cost still being incurred, um, that's kind of a an issue with me. Mm. Um, and I guess I have a couple questions, Administrator Kirk, if that's okay. Sure. Um, can, if, if this were put on the ballot, and if the voters did pass the possibility to annex this property, um, and I know those are both hypotheticals, but that's kind of one of the reasons one, that we... One of those is not a hypothetical, and I, I want to be really clear. This will be on the ballot sure, sure. as a question. If you approve this resolution tonight, we will not know the results, and they will not be valid. Okay. But it will still be on the ballot. It will sure. not be coming off the ballot itself. So let me rephrase. If Sorry, just so we're clear. Sure. If on the ballot and the, the population <coughs> votes to allow the board in the future to possibly annex the property, um, could the same kind of thing happen again where, and I think Mr. Anderson answered this, but... Could the handy board override the shareholders and propose annexation to us without the shareholders agreeing to such proposal? I'm not sure I know the answer to that question, but I do think uh, one thing that we did not do prior to this decision was request that uh, proof that some formal action had been taken by the ditch company. Um, and we would request that in the future. Okay. So, uh, we we the question that you have. Sure, I think that's fine. Yes, yeah, so if you could come to the front, it, that's for the for having this. This is televised, right? The board of directors has never overrun the shareholders in a situation like this. I'm sorry, can you say that one more time? I didn't quick. Can you repeat that? Uh, any shareholder uh, board of directors would never override the shareholders. That's not our uh, first of all. It's not our motive to how we handle things in a handy ditch because of the. Stockholders are the, the final say for everything. So we would not uh, like that approach at all. In other words, just the information that needs to go out, uh, the true information that needs to go out to the handy shareholders, uh, minus all the, uh, the hype and misinformation that has been out here. Uh, I just don't, I have a hard time understanding how the, the, the clarity of uh, Chris did a good job the first night that we discussed about it, and the other night did a very good job, too, of explaining that there are no commitments at this point. So the town and voters can turn it down and or accept it, and the handy shelter owners can do the whole thing. Okay. So, and we'll know more of the result in November after the meeting, and uh, at that point they can, they can be informed and then make a true judgment on the facts that exist because uh, all of this from the beginning has been just in a uh, input stage, the negotiation with the, the developer where there's five different plans out there, uh, nothing had been decided on, it just uh, facilitated the speeding up of the uh, situation if it did pass and the stockholders were in favor of it. and. Uh, that's that's where we're at. But in answer to your question, no, the, the board would never override the software. Okay, thank you. Can so, I, can I say something? One more, one more question, Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson. If you don't mind. So, <coughs> Mayor Karspeck, you know, made a point that you guys have a member meeting yes. coming up here sometime soon. Do you know when that is? It is the 22nd of, uh, of October. Yeah, because we have to get 30 days. We have to advertise it 30 days ahead of time. So right, okay. So you guys are going to have a full member meeting to discuss this right. and any other business. Yes. So my next question is to Chris. 
Um, when is our deadline to nullify these results? When, when is that time frame? Uh, in order to cancel the question, as we've discussed, I think the last day is October 14th. So it will be before they have their Okay, meeting. so that's where I was getting at, yeah. is if we had time to kind of pause this. Yeah, yeah, I think don't. that's the challenge. So if, if, there's a, if there's a need or concern to have the, the handy dish company meeting prior to, we can't, we, the timing won't work. Because they need the notice. That's right. About that deadline. Okay. So the, the way I see this, I mean, this is a predicament. Mm -hmm. um, I empathize with really all parties. And I, I will echo, I think we've all kind of said this so far, but I mean, from the town's perspective, at least mine personally, I'm going to do my, put us on the record that I was here, and I think we all were, just to accommodate, you know, more primarily the developer and you guys yeah. in the handy ditch. Um, I, personally, I have no dog in this fight. Um, we've now done, you know, a couple special meetings about this. I'm happy to serve my, you know, function as a trustee on the town to, you know, coordinate these matters. But uh, I just want to put it on the record that I don't think, I, I'm speaking for myself, and I don't think anyone here on this side of the table had any nefarious, you know, unfair intentions or, you know, backroom type type dealings whatsoever. So I will state that just publicly. Um, I'm with Trusty Iris on, I'm torn with the cats out of the bag. We can't take this off the ballot. It's going to be a question on the ballot. Someone's going to pay for it. You guys may meet, you know, this October, next year, never, sometime five years, and decide to do this again. Someone has to pay for it again if it comes back. Um, and it's going to be a complicated, confusing scenario for our general, you know, population that's voting on it to see it come up potentially, you know, more than once. Um, so that's just <coughs> to kind of clarify and just lay it out there where. My thoughts are, um, but I lean, I mean, it's really, it's your property and your rights to do what you wish to. So it's, this is unfortunate. <laughs> I do not like how this is playing out, um, but it is what it is. Not, you know, so I tend to agree with Mayor Karspak. I have to agree with you. I'm uh, not happy with it's playing out, but it just, uh, <clears throat> I guess that's where we have to accept the responsibility for not going through the proper steps we thought we were and the misinterpretation of the information turned out to be, uh, I mean, once it's clarified, I think it'll become clear. But, right. But right now it's clear as mud. So. so I have another question um, in a in particular case. Um, this, let's say years down the road, nothing happens this year. 10 years down the road with new shareholders, this is still in place. So they would net, if this, if the, if we did not do this tonight, if the election, uh, if the um, language passed on the ballot, is there a potential fear that 10, 20 years from now, someone could use this vote that happens in, in November for some other type of annexation with the handy? You mean like a forced annexation? No, I'm just want, I'm just trying to clear up any fear if there if there is any. There might not be that. Hey, um, we want this particular. We're talking about this particular arrangement. But in 20 years, if we don't do anything now, in 20 years, something totally different could arise, and it never goes to the people because 20 years ago it passed. Does that make sense? Well, it would go to the people regardless. Annexation decisions are yeah. statutorily controlled. There's public hearings. There's I mean. You guys know right. from dealing with other annexations, there's a very strict process. There's notice requirements, people that live within a certain distance of the annexation. There's multiple public hearings before the planning commission and the town board. So even in the future, if the Handy Ditch Company chose to annex, whether that's next year or 10 years from now, they still have to go through the statutory annexation <coughs> process that, that they would have to go to regardless of whether or not they do that now or in the future. The only difference is if this doesn't pass or if it if if the question is canceled, they that you cannot, as the town board, approve their annexation request. Does that make sense? Right. It makes sense. I also have a future hypothetical question. If the town were to vote in favor of the possibility of annexation, 
would that leave the property in danger in the future of uh, of a future board bypassing some procedure and forcibly annexing the property now that it has been voted on? So, for instance, future, twenty future town board, correct? So, for in, the, the hypothetical in twenty years, this has been opened. There's no there's no limitation on this possibility. Could someone then use that to say this property is actually open for annexation, and so the board in twenty years? So I don't think, I don't think that the, and I, I'm sorry, I'm speaking off the cuff because I haven't really thought about that, mm -hmm. but I, one, I don't believe that the reservoirs would meet the statutory requirements for a forced annexation. So I don't think the town could do it anyway, in, at least as it currently, you know, as the town is currently situated, right? It's not surrounded by enough town limits for, for that to even be a possibility. Okay. Um, and again, a, a forced annexation is a significant public process. It's not, I mean, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about how the town board works, right? Like you guys can't just one day go out and take someone's property or annex someone's property. You know, there, there are long legal processes that occur for those things. So I think the risk that you're describing is probably very minimal. Okay. Um, I guess my last question would be um, if we decide that the uh, ballot question is null. Um, what is the legal ramifications for the cost of the election? Since we are basically, we made a deal with um, the developer that the developer would pay for the question, but if the question is void, who does that still come to? Well, but just in the interest of uh, full transparency from my perspective, and I don't have a vote in this. Uh, as the town administrator, I would have a hard time asking the developer to pay for a valid question that is of no consequence. We did budget the money to cover the cost of the election. Uh, so the town can cover the costs. We have the money. We budgeted it. Um, <laughs> and, and to be frank, if we got into a legal fight about who paid for it, we'd spend more on that than we would on the election itself. So, you know, I think that's a, probably an answer or question for a different day. Um, but that's that's just my kind of honest assessment of the situation. Actually, okay, sorry, I know you've been waiting, and I'm, I apologize for jumping, but no, it's, it's relevant to this. Yeah. Um, moving forward. <coughs> Should you know a situation like this arise where a developer and whatever situation comes up where they offer to pay for the language on the ballot, can we pretty much say, okay, we'll allow this and we'll vote for it, but you have to put this in an escrow for us? Yeah, we would. <coughs> we would obviously handle it differently. Okay. In the future, because we would never do what we did. Sure. Again. Well, it's it's one of those where this, this is know. one of those like you know, there's a reason why bureaucracy exists. And everyone hates it and everybody says you should be more efficient and try to get things done and act like you know a private business and then this is kind of what happens yeah um so slow is smooth smooth in the is future fast. there's a reason why we kind of joke there's a form for that right um <coughs> everything we do there's a form for that there's a reason and we would absolutely make it very different okay. the next time around I just want to make sure we don't have to learn the same lesson twice is all and i would say that uh, in the present board is all here tonight and uh, our intention was to, to take this through and make sure that the stockholders understood what the ramifications are and, and what it is. It, we, <coughs> the board of directors themselves, entertained this uh, uh, request from uh, Heron Lakes uh, because of its potential uh, advantage to the ditch company and its infrastructure. Yeah, and that's going to be very important to the town in the future. And uh, it gives another way for, uh, since you guys are going through the change case too, to take in some of that water uh, into your bank, then uh, it's an important question that the uh, expansion of the reservoir and uh, <clears throat> adding more storage, which we have the ability to do through both the FEMA program and in conjunction with the developer are very good things. They just need to be clarified to the stockholders that that's the reason that the board uh, pursued. And that's why I sent the letter out that said, 
we that we have been approached by Heron Lakes to do this. So the steps the board probably took, and I have to take the blame since I am the president, that it just uh, the the miscommunication that resulted in that uh, wasn't uh, meant to be, but it happened. And there's some uh, a lot of rumors and innuendos get around, and people get their backs up, mm -hmm. which is unfortunate before they know the facts. So that's where we're here at this point. So thank you, <coughs> Mr. Pennick. Would you like yeah. to speak? Yeah. I'm Doug Pennock. I'm not one of the handy board members. Um, I really apologize for us wasting a lot of your guys' precious time. But in the in the whole scheme of this whole thing, um, when it was presented to us, we were all thought you know the handy shareholders would be interested. Um, the reason we're here tonight because we got big pushback this week that they're not interested. And so that's the <coughs> big reason for this. I mean, it's not that we waffled or anything else. The shareholders have spoke to us and said, we don't want this. And that's kind of where we're at tonight. And that's the reason we asked for what we had. And yes, we're going to have a meeting down the road and we'll try and convince them that, that maybe that's a good thing. Um, there is a lot of good things that could happen and if a deal could be worked out. But we're a long ways from there. And so I think that's why we need to slow this down and hold it tonight. So Mr. Peck, in your opinion, this should be... We should vote yes on this on this tonight. Yes. Okay. I didn't know the whole board is here tonight, so that's good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Penning, I'm sorry. I'm thinking my administrative role here. Do you need? We might need your address for the oh, for the record. I'm it's, sorry. Uh, 0347, zero three four seven zero or zero three four seven East Highway fifty six. Thank right. you very much. <coughs> Mr. Anderson, in your opinion. Uh, as, as president and, and chair, would you, that we should vote on this tonight, vote yes on this tonight. Okay, yeah, pardon me? If you could come to the front again, I'm sorry, you're definitely getting your steps in tonight. Um, <laughs> in your opinion, you're fine, I'm not, yeah. In your opinion, um, just like asked um, Mr. Pennick, would you like us to vote yes on this tonight? Well, I, I just don't see, you mean to vacate the vote? Exactly. Uh, Okay, so I guess I have, I don't have a total understanding is is how fast it can be uh, put back on the ballot or how fast it can go once the uh, misinformation gets straightened out. I think it's one year to the next election. November until next November. No, okay. next November. So it would be one year. Okay. Well, uh, the stockholders have, have let us know that they would just rather. Uh, have not had it put forward in the in the end. I don't see I don't see a whole lot of advantage to going ahead and voting. I feel like we might as well find out how the town feels about it and find out how the stockholders feel about it, and then it's going to play out either way. It's either negative or positive. And without uh, I, I see no I see no advantage in in vacating the vote if. It is already to the point where it can't go on, and it goes that. I don't think it changes the negotiation point with Bertha. Or the uh, the only thing it does is that it just opens up to uh, full information for the stockholders to the benefit, the pros versus the cons. And I cannot say how the uh, uh, direct uh, the stockholders will vote at this point, but. Uh, since there are no binding situation at this point, uh, and there are no commitments to made, you can't force us to uh, annex, and you won't annex if we don't request it through the whole thing. I'm in favor of seeing how it plays out at this point, since we are at this point. It just seems like a futile uh, uh, situation where our time and your time I wasn't put to good use, and uh, uh, I just as soon see how it, it plays out. Just like Doug said, it's either going to go or it's not going to go with the stockholders and the same with the voters of the town. Interesting. Well, that said, if, if say, the vote does go through, like the 
we don't nullify the language and the people vote no, then there's it's pretty much just locked down. That's just not going to happen. If the if it if it's not withdrawn, we keep using the term withdrawn. Sorry, no. It's going to be on the ballot. But no. If, the, if those if those results are kind of canceled out and we don't ever find out what they are, um, they can come back in November next year and do it again if the town board was willing to do that uh, and and put it back on the ballot. If the vote happens and comes back no, you can't annex anyway. Uh, even if they come and ask. Um, if the vote is yes, they can come and then ask to annex, or they can choose not to, and nothing happens. But a no vote this year doesn't preclude a yes, a yes vote next year. A no vote this year doesn't preclude them from asking again. Right. And, and for uh, them ask, no, I'm talking about us yes. asking the public. Them asking us to ask the public. Okay. It, I know it, it's a messy situation, right? Because the town board put the town board has to take the action to put it on the ballot. We didn't take the action to bring it up. Right. We're facilitating a request from the developer and the ditch company at the time. Um, we would be doing the same again next year. If they came and asked, you would choose whether or not you want to put it on the ballot. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. This is the easy part of the job. <laughs> <laughs> so, just about there. I'm just. I want to clarify. I want to be. Yeah. I heard two conflicting. <laughs> yes, you did. You did. <laughs> because we can't have things nice and easy. Um. I don't know. I, it seems like we rushed into this with the best of intentions, but it ends up kind of dislodging the normal process. And while. The money's already been spent either way. I think we would be better suited to pursue this in ways that all parties are available. We have a good sight line on everything and we can actually address this properly. And as unfortunate as the situation is, lesson learned that we didn't learn anything that it was a waste, but now that we are a little bit wiser for it, we can come back possibly next year and do it the right way instead of the fast way. That's my two cents. I, I tend to agree with you. I think <coughs> we can do this again. Um, it is unfortunate, but um, I, I, Mr. Anderson, I think you're some forethought in what you did. I don't think you did the wrong thing by trying to put this in front of the, your shareholders. I think there was some leadership there, and I, I'm, it's unfortunate the way this turned out. I, I agree with you, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, that um, I think the right thing to do here, if there is some pushback and, and frustration that there's always another opportunity to do this for the handy. Um, so I, I would be in favor of also a, a voting yes on this. Just here, did you have some? Voting yes to this Essentially to nullify. Null, nullify the results. Well, I don't know because it's at this point incredibly complicated and it is unfortunate that we move forward quickly with the best intentions of everyone involved but now I'm also concerned about spending town money because we acted so quickly. And to take money out of our fund because, to, take, to basically pay for nothing. To pay so that we printed ink on a ballot is, yeah. we're, we're, is basically where we are. Well, we, it in theory, yes. And when it's nullified, yes. I agree with you. Right. It's unfortunate. But at the same time, um, that's how lessons are learned. And sometimes you're easy and you can learn from other people's experiences or even wisdom. But sometimes you get to be the snowplow and you find the post that didn't get pushed out. This is that situation where I agree. It's <laughs> It sucks. I'm not going to beat around the bush. It sucks. But there's nothing we can really do other than just remember it and move forward a little bit more slowly and with this wisdom. Yeah. Um, to play devil's advocate as yes. well, just oh, to yeah. argue with you. Um, I think what we could also do is remain <coughs> in our position in this instance as the facilitators that we chose to do and leave it up to the shareholders and the board to um, push 
for a no vote on the ballot if that's what they want. What's the cost of this election? The the way the cost gets divvied up, clerks and work can correct me if I'm wrong, but because we're coordinating with the county and the county's running the election on our behalf, right? We're we're placing a ballot on a bigger we're placing a question on a bigger ballot. It's a whole bunch of stuff on it, right? Several counties. And several jurisdictions are partnering with the county in that. So the county divvies up the cost, the actual cost, based on you know how many ballots go out in your jurisdiction. Is that correct? So we don't have the exact cost yet. Uh, it's tens of thousands of dollars. I was thinking 30 or something. Yeah. Trish Butler? That's... <laughs> Well, I have a lot of thoughts. Um, I just, I, I do feel, and this is complicated. Um, I'm having a tough time swallowing the <coughs> that the town is bearing all accountability. I think like where Mr. Ayers is at. I see, you know, your side with the lesson learned. I think we all have some culpability with this. Sure. We need your you know, perhaps we're now finding out after the fact, you know, the first time, maybe a little too quick. This also, to me, I don't like to use the word feel, but this feels like a knee jerk today in my perspective mm -hmm. as well. Um, yes, sir. If I may, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure I want to offer this, but I want you to have all the information <laughs> if that's fair. You don't have to decide tonight. The county has already said the question is not coming off the paper ballots. The question will be on the paper ballots whether you want it on there or not. Um, you have until October 14th to decide to nullify the results of the election prior to them occurring. And if you, and I, I think I understand Trustee Butler's position that it feels like a knee jerk reaction to make that decision tonight. And, and certainly we know that knee jerk reactions are, or you know, quick decisions sometimes don't lead to the best results. Um, so you can choose not to do anything tonight and take this up at a future meeting after everybody's had some time to kind of think through it. The reason why it was on a special meeting agenda tonight was twofold. One, when we made the decision to have a special meeting, we had not received written confirmation from the county uh, that the ballot language could not be removed. we had been told that multiple times uh, but we wanted it in writing from them so that, frankly, people could quit telling us that we were not being truthful about that. Um, we received that very late in the afternoon yesterday after we'd already made the decision to hold a special meeting. Um, and so it felt like the right thing to do to keep this special meeting, uh, get it noticed, have it, discuss this publicly. Again, there's been some concern about transparency that I don't think is valid, but I want to make sure is uh, doesn't continue. So have this discussion tonight in public, recorded for the world to see. Um, that was the other motivation for having the meeting tonight. <clears throat> but again, the decision you make tonight is not going to take the language off the ballot if you chose to adopt this resolution. Right. <clears throat> and you can choose to adopt this resolution up until October 14th. So while that prolongs the decision and the, and the debate and the concern, it also maybe gives some time to think through the issue uh, and make sure that you're making the right decision and not just making a fast decision. So you guys have to make that decision ultimately. So I apologize for adding that added you're layer of complexity. <laughs> but I think it's important that you understand yeah, thank you. That the makes situation. Sense. Um, I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. And we have two more regular scheduled board meetings before then. Correct. You have two more regularly scheduled board meetings, one on September 27th and one on October 11th. Not the right date? I should know off the top of my head. Yeah, that's right. Um, prior to that deadline in our IGA. Would the later of those two meetings allow you enough time to communicate with the county? About what? Yeah, we would just simply notify them in writing the next day, I think. That way. And again, it won't no change. Correct. It won't change anything for the county, other than that they won't tell us the results of the election. Right. But the election will still occur, and that people will get a ballot, and they'll be able to mark yes or no. We just won't know what those results are if if the board chooses to do that later. 
Here's a thought too that well, one, I, I, I definitely see that third option there. Two, I, I think we're here tonight and um, it's not about my time or any of our time, um, but since we're here and we're all competent adults, it, it makes sense for us to vote in my opinion. I also don't see a problem waiting too if we want to have Trustee Sorcelli and Trustee Hardy missing one. Well, uh, wait. Thanks. Trust me, Murphy, weigh in. Um, uh, I was going to say something else too, but I forgot. I, I may also suggest the town didn't have a real dog in this fight from the beginning, other than we were trying to accommodate a request that we thought sounded like a good idea. I think we can all say that relatively confidently. Um, and I think the same is true tonight, right? I mean, I. I don't want to speak on your behalf, but I don't know that the town, that in, in terms of the town board and town staff, feel really strongly about whether or not this gets annexed, right? I mean, yeah. I, and I, I don't want to speak on your behalf, because no, you have to make that decision ultimately. I think that's fair. But tonight, that's true, I think. And so, <clears throat> if the handy ditch company does not want the results of this election, I see no reason to stand in the way of that. It, it is unfortunate and it's disappointing that we'll have some expense and we'll figure out what to do about that. Um, that we, that is effectively for nothing more than ink on page, on page, but, um, that, that's just the reality of the situation. Um, we did hear kind of conflicting statements tonight, so maybe there's a good reason to just wait to vote. I, but again, you're also perfectly within your rights to to vote tonight and we can notify the county on Monday morning that the resolution was approved and um, okay. my last point I forgot was that maybe if we voted no tonight um, and comes down the road they would have more time to prepare some kind of uh, political push to help out the voters vote yes so giving them another year versus if they're some of them are feeling caught off guard, there's no real chance. <clears throat> yeah, that's just a small thought. Because there were conflicting um, statements, would it be inappropriate to ask the since the board is here, would it be inappropriate to ask them to give us kind of a show of hands of support or not support? I'm I'm asking you legitimately. Is that can we do a poll? I I'll be honest, and I I don't I think. Uh, you know, I've really not a joint meeting, but we can uh, say yeah. all the citizens. I, or the I just think we need a clear answer from the Handy Ditch Company. Correct. Yeah. If they want this removed from the ballot or the results nullified is the right, I think, term. They just need to say that <coughs> really explicitly. And I think that's what we heard from Mr. Pinnock. I think we all, based on what Mr. Anderson said, felt like we got a different response. Can I get a shareholder perspective on this? Sure, please. This is a little less formal than a typical meeting. <laughs> Um, the shareholder perspective is that we all gathered on this. Ma'am, what was your name and address? Thank I'm you. sorry. I know you are. Elizabeth Carney, 1600 West Cairo 10 E, Berkeley, Colorado. Thank you. Um, we, the shareholders and the other board members, came here with the understanding that we were here in support of the ordinance to nullify the, mm -hmm. the ballot measure. Um, and now, now there's been some waffling. Mm -hmm. And I see how this happened. I understand how this happened in the first place because the board never had the authority to ask this, right? Just like Mr. Anderson on his own doesn't have the authority to ask you to do this. Um, the board made a written request to the town to withdraw it. That's the piece that is missing from the first go round. There was no written document signed by Handy Ditch asking for this to happen. That's the piece of paper that you must have before you ever move forward on one of these again. So we had people who were like on both sides of the fence and people who thought this was a good idea and they started having conversations and that's just not how it works. They don't have the authority to bind that entity with conversations that occurred. And that's why we're in this mess right now. Um, so there's additional waffling going on, but we have some, there was a decision made and a written communication came from Handy Ditch yesterday asking for this to be pulled. Mm. And that's the official position of the Handy Ditch as far as the town of Berkeley should be concerned. 
that yeah. officially from the board. Okay. That answers my question. Right. So yeah. I guess ultimately the question now is for the four of us, since all four of us have to vote and all four of us have to agree, otherwise we don't have a quorum. Is there anybody not wanting to vote tonight? Does anybody want to pass this down? And that's okay. I'm just No, I think we I want to vote. Okay. If we don't have three in favor, if it's two two, this well, fails. Well, it, essentially, it's if four don't vote yes, it's an automatic. We can't pass that just because. Yeah. It, no, it should just be a majority of those present. Really, I thought it was no. four have to vote yes, otherwise it doesn't no, happen. That's a quorum. Okay. Okay. So we need three in favor, otherwise this fails, which yep. is interesting. Okay. <clears throat> if it fails, it fails. If it fails, it fails. Yep. So. I think you can just ask for a motion if somebody's prepared. And okay. Uh, does anyone want to make that motion? I move to approve resolution 2022-11, withdrawing the ballot question regarding Welch Reservoir, McNeil Reservoir, and adjacent properties owned by the Handy Ditch Company and the authorization of annexation thereof. Is there a second? I'll second. All right, we have a motion uh, by Mayor Pro Tem Grace, seconded by Trustee Ayers. Any final discussion on this? Yeah. I don't like this. <laughs> um, I guess no, no good deed goes unpunished. I guess, and I feel, um, to use feel right, I feel rather concerned that um, I'm having to spend the town's money to do nothing because of a miscommunication, and I would urge that in all parties involved, myself included. I will take full responsible responsibility for my decision from earlier this year um, that this kind of thing never happen again. Um, I don't like bureaucracy. I don't like um, miscommunication either. But um, if <coughs> that is the position of the board, um, then it was my mistake initially to move forward without written documentation, without official um, claims, without official asks, without official um, communication. Mm -hmm. And so for that, that's my mistake and it's unfortunate, um, but I don't see how with that official communication to us at this point that I can deny the uh, request. Yep. And for what it's worth, I apologize to the town board and to the handy dish shareholders. Um, I, I, there's really no other alternative except to say that I take full responsibility for the fact that we didn't ask for that written, written documentation. Um, Sorry, I think it was the same. I'm, I'm not even sure that I, I, I don't even know now in retrospect that I could say I took someone's word for it other than to say that representatives of the handy dish company board were at every meeting. And so, yeah, I made I made an improper assumption that there was, uh, you know, official support from the Handy Dish Company. And and because this is really effectively non-binding, on the Dish Company, no one ever really felt like it was a significant concern. Um, yeah, I I don't think. But, uh, in my opinion, there's nothing apologize. to apologize for. Um, I believe there is, and I appreciate your sentiment. But I think when a representative comes before us, and it uh, seemed like there was agreement of the board of directors, that's really who we contact, anyways. So, I mean, if you talk to the town of Berthet, you talk to the board of trustees. You wouldn't be talking to the public every time. There's just too many of them. So, but we should have required them to provide us written proof. Yeah. Cool. We have a motion uh, on the table here. It's been seconded. Anything else? Clerk, may have a roll call vote, please. Trustee Butler. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Grace? Yes. Trustee Ayers? Yes. Mayor Carsmack? Yes. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. I'm going to join the meeting. <laughs>